Our first speaker is Daniel Zahn. Da Daniel is a senior majoring in English, Philosophy, and Communication Arts and Sciences. He has worked on reforming Penn State free speech related policies, advised students on their rights through the student conduct process, advocated for the university to adopt a stance promoting free speech, and published three op-eds about free speech on college campuses. Last summer, Daniel interned at the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, a civil rights nonprofit dedicated to promoting the essential qualities of liberty on college campuses. He serves as the president of the Mock Trial Association, the assistant director of the Student Conduct Advisors, a student representative to the University Conduct Board, and a chair of the Student Organization Conduct Committee. In his talk, Daniel will outline where Penn State stands on free speech and how our policies can reflect our values. There are Nazis meeting at Penn State. There are white supremacists recruiting at Penn State. And there are rape apologists being invited to speak at Penn State. But we know this, and we can protest this, and we can fight against this, because there's free speech at Penn State. And because there's free speech at Penn State, we can fight for racial justice. And because there's free speech at Penn State, we can be proud of who we are and how far we've come. And because there's free speech at Penn State, we can hear from speakers on the right and speakers on the left, sometimes at the same time, and sometimes it seems like all the time. In this talk, I'm going to talk about why I value free speech. And I'm also going to talk about where Penn State stands on free speech and how our policies can align with our values. I didn't actually start speaking until I was three years old and then I went through over 10 years of speech therapy. But while I had such trouble speaking, I saw other people use speech to empower communities. I saw people use speech to change the laws and what was accepted at Penn State. Sorry. <laughs> um, around the nation. And I saw people use speech about issues I care about. So a lot of people know that I care about free speech. I've worked with Penn State administrators on policy reform. I've worked with, I've published three op-eds, and I've actually won awards about free speech on college campuses. But the reason I value free speech is because of its power to change, because of its ability to change the way that narratives happen, and because of its ability to enable protest and dialogue about issues I care about. It seems at Penn State that free speech isn't a big issue. Walking from the hub to Willard, you can hear that you're going to hell sometimes three times a day. <laughs> and those people are able to speak there without issue. In fact, a few years ago, we had an issue where white supremacists were trying to speak at Penn State. And members of the Penn State community tweeted at Penn State telling them to take down the posters. When Penn State said that they wouldn't, people actually started a petition to get Penn State to take down the posters. But Penn State responded by saying that, can't really read it here, but it was the university's job as an institute of higher education to allow people, even with viewpoints that they disagree with, to engage with others on campus. In their response, Penn State made no mention to the fact that they're constitutionally required to do this. They said, as an institute of higher education, as a value to the purpose of the university. If you'll fast forward to this year, a student organization invited speakers to Penn State that many found vile. These speakers were transphobic and rape apologists. And students got angry. Organizations such as the Penn State Democrats, the LGBTQA Roundtable, Students for Bernie, Students for Warren, United Socialists at Penn State, they all signed a statement asking for Penn State to cease acknowledging the student organization and to stop all funds to speaking events like this. The university responded not only outlining why it was illegal for them to stop recognizing the organization to exercise viewpoint discrimination in allocating funds, but they also said that even if it were illegal, they wouldn't do it because universities must protect and encourage 
free speech, especially speech with which they disagree. They said that it was a fundamental purpose of the university to encourage ideological diversity and differing viewpoints. You'd think with these great practices that Penn State would also have good policies, but that's not the case. The Foundation for Individual Rights in Education ranks policies as red light, yellow light, or green light. Red light institutions have at least one policy that clearly and substantially restricts free speech. Yellow light institutions have at least one policy that either restrict a more vague amount of free speech or are just too vague that they can be applied unfairly. And green light policies have no pol green light institutions have no policies that seriously hinder free speech. Let's look at where Penn State stands in contrast to the Big Ten. Now, when I made the first draft of this PowerPoint, the University of Michigan was the only institution in the Big Ten with a red light policy. But since today, they've actually revised that policy and they've become a red light institution, a yellow light institution, excuse me. And they're joined by most other institutions of the Big Ten, including Penn State. You can't see the other ones, but it's most of them. <laughs> However, there are two institutions in the Big Ten that have these green light policies, which means Penn State has the ability to join our peer schools in putting our values and our practices into our policies. But what's stopping it is a policy called AD91. AD91 is discrimination and harassment and other inappropriate conduct. Now, I'm not saying I'm for discrimination or harassment. I'm 100% not. But the reason why it's a yellow light policy is because in their example, they say that harassment may include graphic or written statements, threats, or slurs. Which means that it's a written statement that's not a threat and not a slur. Slur, and it's not tied back to the definition of harassment. And we've seen policies like this be used by other universities to unfairly target certain groups. At the University of Michigan, they tried to punish a student of color for using the word white trash based off policies like this. They even tried to punish an international student for asking why people were offended by the N-word. You can see that when these policies are put into practice, vague policies like this can be abused by administrators to restrict constructive speech. This policy is a simple fix. You just need to highlight that harassment must conform to the stated definition so they can't be unfairly applied. But the most important thing that Penn State can do in ensuring that its values are put into policies is adopt an independent policy supporting free speech. In 2014, the University of Chicago, specifically the Committee on Free Expression, released a report. And in that report, they state that all universities should be committed to free and open inquiry because that's what's beneficial to the university community. It is pivotal for the role of the university to engage with viewpoints that they disagree with and encourage that dialogue. Since that, Seven other Big Ten institutions have adopted the Chicago Statement on Free Expression, and 63 other institutions, ranging from public to private, from secular to religious, have also adopted it. Penn State has it, but we should be the next institution. Penn State is a leader in so many ways. It's time for us to be a leader in supporting free speech, it's time for us to be a leader in encouraging dialogue over silence. And it's time for us to put our values into our policies. Thank you.